Hi folks, welcome once again to a Gaz Labs video, very short one today. Um, just wanted to mention the EMF stuff, which seems to be on everyone's mind at the moment. Um, this is, uh, if you're unaware what this is, this uh, is a something that's been mentioned by Ofcom that, that is in uh, consultation. Um, and they're thinking of making some changes to the conditions on our license whereby we have to measure the field strength around our antenna and actually make sure that it doesn't exceed um, two watts per meter squared um, at the point of our boundary where the public can cross. Um, that also could be your neighbor's boundary, so where your neighbors are. So if you've got a four meter wide house, then you know, two meters either side that needs to fall within that uh, that safe um, level. Now, this has actually put the fear of God into uh, some people thinking is that the world is going to come to an end because they're going to have to do some sophisticated measurement. Well, the, the answer to that, I think, is going to be I don't think it will be that sort of serious. Um, number one point to remember, I think, is 90 percent of us um, well, we'll take our uh, ham radio license, whatever level, and we will never deal with um, Ofcom or anybody else um, in our entire lives. I think that is number one to sort of, uh, you know, think about. So I'm not suggesting for a moment that you should all go and break the law with it. But, um, you know, all I'm saying is that, you know, 90% of us have no dealings with Ofcom or anybody else for the entire um, duration of, of us holding our licenses. Possibly once every five years when you log on to Ofcom and, and sign up for another five years. Um, so that leaves probably 5% of us that uh, that may have to, to deal with Ofcom for whatever. Chances are that uh, Ofcom have knocked on your door because um, you're interfering with someone's alarm or someone's key fob on their car, which seems to be quite popular. Um, if you do either of, of which, you're on the back foot because they take a dim view of it, and uh, or it would appear that people take a dim view of that and uh, you're the one that has to make the changes, even though you may be licensed. Um, but that's a whole other story. Um, so I've heard of uh, situations like that, but I think, you know, as a whole, I don't think this is going to be a huge, a huge thing. I just think this, this will be just another box to tick where I think that you might need to make some changes is if you keep a logbook and you should, I suppose, keep a logbook when you transmit that sort of stuff. I'm not suggesting down to who you make contacts with or anything like that, but you could put on there that you were transmitting at this particular power between these particular hours um, on these particular bands. That probably would be good enough. And you could then just put on it that you've made those sort of sums and the as yet we do not know and anyone that says they do i think is um is probably uh not telling the truth that there's no way at this precise moment of knowing exactly what we've got to do because it just hasn't been sort of said and i don't think even ofcom know what they what they're going to do about it at the moment there is they have put up on their website a calculator in an, as an excel spreadsheet i think that is a bit um is a bit lame but you know but nonetheless they've done it they put it there for us um but yeah as yet we don't know that will give you the calculation you do need to know your erp and that is fairly easy to calculate i've actually done a little excel spreadsheet which i will share with everyone um what you can do with that is you put your transmitter power transmit power it takes into account the coax loss and the antenna gain and it gives you your ERP which you can then enter into the Ofcom calculator and then that will give you the rest of it. That was uh, I think that would be very useful for those that um, maybe maths is not their first go-to sort of uh, skill. Um, I think that's where it's going to be. I think it's going to be a calculation more than anything else. Um, that makes sense to me. I don't think we're going to have to do much more than that. It might be um, prudent to wander around with the with the field strength meter at some point that you can then add some 
some figures into it just to, to bolster your measurements, say once a year. Um, but to be honest, I don't think you need to do that. Right, sum that up. No one knows where this is gonna go. It's all in consultation. I think there's a lot of guesswork going on. I think there's a lot of people sort of um, jumping on the bandwagon and actually sort of bigging it up. And I don't think that it's there yet. I don't think we, I just don't think there's anything or anything that we can worry about at the moment because there is nothing cast in stone. This is all consultation stuff. Um, you can approach the RSGB, um, and if you if you're in the know and you're willing to put sort of something to paper, there's actually they've got an email on there which you can possibly speak to. It might all be a bit late now um, because um, it's heading towards the end of the year, and I think it will come in uh, probably early next year or the end of this year. Um, so we'll see. But that's it. Don't worry about it. Um, it's not going to be a biggie. It's just going to be a little chore that we'll all do probably once a year or when you set your station up or whenever you make a change. Um, what I would like to see, I think, is a little bit of uh, cast in stone information from, from someone. That, But uh, as I say, at the moment, I don't think it's going to be possible. But anyway, there you go. End of that. Um, don't worry about it. Um, I've had a few issues with um, my setup here and I'm struggling with the ground loops, uh, USB ground loops. And I've seen this somewhere before. Um, at the moment, it's showing itself up with my microphone and um, the audio interface of my ATEM, which is why I've got this uh, stupid road on. I mean, you look like a complete dickhead with this uh, plastered on you with like road and like glowing lights coming out of your thing. Um, but at the moment, it's a, nece a necessary evil. The I've got a PR here, um, you can see that. Uh, it's a PR40 higher one. I like using that because it's just got a nice tone to it and I, I, can, I don't have to worry about any of this faff. Um, but it normally runs through my Behringer UMC204H. And I can't, for some unknown reason, it's now creating some kind of ground loop going on and it's causing my ATEM to generate loads of hash and it's awful. Um, so anyway, I've had a little look around and it would appear that you can get these um, these things here, which are isolators, USB isolators, and it stops the, the ground loop effect. Um, and it normally only happens on powered devices from, from USB. But the ATEM isn't powered. Um, the the um, the UMC two hundred four is that is powered, um, but I don't know how to fix it. So I've got an external power supply USB uh, powered hub, and I've tried it on that. Uh, that did help, but it didn't cure it completely. So at the moment, I've got the road on there, which is going into the ATEM, and uh, there is that is all gone. All the noise is gone. So that one's a bit of a um, bit of a strange one. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use one or t'other, but I'm going to need to get some kind of preamp um, output so I can put XLR into a little box with a, a thing out. Um, now I did. I mean I've got the XR12 up here. Um, but I'm upgrading that to the X X Air. Sorry, X Air 12. I got. I'm going to upgrade that to the X Air 18. Maybe that will remove some of the issues that I'm having. I wondered if it was my computer that gone wrong. I don't know. Strange one. But anyway, I'll show you what I've um, what I've found uh, here. I found these. Um, no, but the trouble is, I don't know if um if that is if that is going to work um this this thing here um yeah it's a bit of a strange one uh, the only thing that i'm a bit concerned about is the um is the is the bandwidth it, well, not the bandwidth the uh, speed of it um they say that it's high speed but it's not the ultra high speed jobbies so if it's going into um, 
you know USB 3 whether or not that would actually be just a bit too much I don't know if any of you guys know out there how I can break the ground loop cycle then uh, I'm all ears I'd be I'd love to hear it um, because that is a bit of a strange one a bit of a pain in the neck um, uh, what did I talk did I talk about this thing last week um, I gave up on a on a kit but I didn't give up on the parts I'm going to throw some of them away I'm hoping that I can repurpose some of them now this is an old CB power su oh, sorry not power supply this is an old CB tuner or antenna matcher by Zetagi and it's got some beautiful capacitors in there. Now that really is, is pretty handy because what I can do is I can put those in a QRP tuner and then maybe use the SWR bridge from that other kit and maybe even then use the inductor so I can flip the in inductor around. Um, and that suddenly becomes a rescue um, a lifeline for that uh, that kit now I've already checked it I put two to one um, SWR and a load on there um, and I've given it a little go and uh, it does tune it doesn't tune brilliantly but it does tune so I think that might be an answer to that the other thing that I've got on the go is the kit that I've um, bought um, one try one thing I'm finding with this is there are no instructions available at all on the web which has kind of made me a bit depressed but um, I'm finding that a lot these some of these cheap kits they're, they're readily available um, in fact they're easier to get than the instructions so I don't understand why that is not that the instructions are fully needed with this um, because there are a few photos online which are probably more useful than, than the instructions in Chinese but what I am sort of finding is um, that there, there's a transformer in there, for instance, and I need to make sure that I get that around the right way and stuff. And they've already pre-wound it, so you've got no idea where it is. So there's no leg been marked on it. There's nothing been marked on it. So which is kind of uh, pin one, or you know the uh, which which what polarity it all is. Okay, so I'm going to stick a fork in this one. Um, I'm, the clocks have changed. Um, it's sent my body clock into a spiral already. Um, I've had a sleep this afternoon. I'm tired again now. So I think, um, yeah, I think I need to, uh, to, go to go to sleep because I've got to be up at, uh, at uh, effectively five o'clock in the morning, which is not going to not going to be easy for me. Um, I do like my sleep. Um, I'm a strange one. I'll I'll stay up all night and uh, and have a lay in in the morning. But uh, anyway, there you go. Thank you for watching. I hope this one's not been too boring. I promise I will make it a little more exciting. I'm going to keep um, changing the uh, the the uh, the spec just a little bit. It won't always be a bit. Uh, I've got another. I've got some other bits and pieces coming, which I'm looking forward to. And um, I might take him out on uh, some of my little walks. I live in um, not far away from uh, Hampton Court. So there's actually some pretty cool uh, um, places uh, dotted around. Um, so I might, uh, I might take you on a couple of those journeys. Um, if you're up for it, that is. Um, and uh, I've noticed that a lot of uh, YouTubers at the moment uh, are very, getting very boring and uh, it's always the same stuff and they seem to struggle for, for things to do. I don't want to get into that sort of position so I might just try and keep it a little bit um, all over the place. We'll see. Um, like I say, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm in a pretty cool place, I suppose, in the sort of scheme of things. Um, there's not uh, huge amounts happening, but uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty, plenty of stuff to to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.